So Dr. Sponsor is going to talk to us about Marfan syndrome and educate us on uh, Marfan's and scoliosis. Paul? Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Dr. Gupta has triplets who are all in their last years of medical school, so congratulations. So I have a great deal of uh, interest in this syndrome, Marfan syndrome, because we see a lot of patients at Hopkins. And I'd like to talk about what it is and what are the issues with treating it non-surgically, and then what if it does need to come to surgical correction. Well, Marfan syndrome is a pretty rare condition, one out of 5,000, but operative scoliosis is really one out of 1,000, so it's not that rare. And there's a pretty significant risk that this person's, people treating scoliosis will come across Marfan patients and sometimes even diagnose them, recognize them for the first time uh, in the course of their treatment. That first picture of me was with a, a famous basketball player from Baylor who went through his whole career and drafted number one to the Celtics before we found out he had Marfan syndrome. So it can be unrecognized, and that's part of what we have to be aware of. It's a disorder of the elastic connective tissue. Uh, if you look under an electron microscope, the uh, fibrils should be pretty regularly spaced, but in Marfan syndrome, they're pretty disorganized, and that means that the structure of bone growth, growth plates, and ligaments can be out of order, but there are also chemical reasons that it can happen as well. Many of the signs of the disorder are invisible. We can't see people's aortic arch, but that's the most important thing. We can't see if their spinal column is widened, and we can't see if their lenses are dislocated, but we can see the findings in their skeleton, and so that's why it's so important to have a, an index of suspicion so that you can recognize this in your patients and uh, or even in your family members or in yourself to get them to the appropriate treatment. The findings of Marfan syndrome, however, are not just one finding, but a constellation of findings. And if you look at any group of people, there, there will be some findings that make a suspicion for it, such as a tall stature or long fingers or long flat feet. But those are pretty common and some are nonspecific. And if we look at uh, the the Marfan patients, they have a lot of the findings, but the general population, a lot of people have some of the findings. So you really need to look for two or three of the findings of Marfan syndrome. And if you see that, you should go to see a geneticist or a cardiologist uh, because it has a great impact on improving people's quality of life and even saving lives. And that is kind of shown here in this family tree. This father had six kids, and he was an orthopedic surgeon, but he died in his 40s not really knowing why, but not until his son was older and his other boy was a cardiologist did they recognize that it was Marf Marfan syndrome. And also, if you like theater, Jonathan Larson wrote a play called Rent, which is still kind of widely, widely uh, used and, and <clears throat> uh, promoted and played. But he never got to see it open on Broadway because he died of an unrecognized aortic arch uh, <clears throat> rupture from Marfan syndrome. So the skeletal features that you should look for are uh, facial features with a long, kind of narrowish facial structure, uh, thumbs that are long, wrists and fingers that are flexible and long, flat feet, an inward sternum, stretch marks on the skin, scoliosis, and a few other features. And if you start to see a number of these, you should be suspicious. In the spine, it's pretty common to have scoliosis or kyphosis or the pectus, as you can see here. The curves do tend to get bigger at a higher rate, and they do tend to have more backache than kind of the average child or young adult. Does a brace help? Unfortunately, it's not as effective. When we looked at the results of bracing in Marfan syndrome, uh, only about 20% got some benefit in terms of preventing surgery uh, or, or uh, curves not getting any bigger. And this is true of not only Marfan, but look-alike syndromes like ehlers danlos and others. When the skeletal structures are not typical, uh, the brace doesn't work as well. So I usually like to start at a lower, a lower level, 15 degrees to 20 degrees in somebody who I know has Marfan if they're flexible and they're willing to wear it. So I also like to avoid it in low yield situations. If you have a 40 to 50 degree curve or the person is uh, medically you know, uh, ready for surgery, uh, heart surgery, we will sometimes uh, spare them of it. The spine fusion is often needed for people with Marfan syndrome. Um, because it can affect lung function, it can affect balance and pain. But the flexibility allows you to correct it pretty well, so you almost never have to go to a difficult complex anterior surgery and can almost always take care of it from the posterior 
in our group that we belong to, we looked at a comparison of Marfan versus idiopathic scoliosis and tried to figure out what were the differences. And we compared two to one Marfan to uh, idiopathic patients because there are plenty of idiopathics to work with. And we found out that they often needed a second operation. They often had certain issues during surgery. They often needed to be fused lower or even to the sacrum. And some of the smaller curves that we wouldn't worry about in idiopathic scoliosis caused problems and needed to come back and be operated in Marfan. So typically, you tend to fuse longer. We also uh, saw some patients with uh, screws cutting out and other problems with the metal rods uh, due to the bony features of Marfan. They usually need a little bit more time to recover and may tend to have some slightly longer, larger blood loss. Why was this? Uh, because the bone is lower in density, uh, the structures, the pedicles and lamina are thin, and the dura, or the uh, water-containing, fluid-containing parts of the spinal canal are, are enlarged. It can also affect young kids. Some children have Marfan syndrome before elementary school, and they can be treated effectively with growing rods, such as this child seen here, in order to get them taller, get them to adulthood, and sometimes uh, not even need a definitive fusion. There are some related syndromes, such as Loewy's Dietz syndrome, shown here, in which there's widely, wide spacing of the eyes, a club foot, extra flexibility of all the major joints, uh, and yet contractures of some of the fingers and toes. And there's also another syndrome called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a hyperflexibility syndrome, comes in many different varieties, but often involving scoliosis. And these patients have certain problems, especially with a prohibition of going anteriorly, uh, a need to fuse more curves, and a, a need to avoid extreme changes in the spinal curve seen from the side. So I think the main message here is that you really want to recognize Marfan syndrome so you can treat it appropriately, uh, brace only for the smaller curves, and the operations uh, should be more comprehensive and with great attention to providing really secure fixation in this slightly different bone. Thank you.